Good day, everyone. Thank you so much for coming for today and watching for watching this video. Welcome to Jacob Co. Ltd. or Jar Custodian of Business Company Limited, your asset to your liabilities. And by the way, my name is Adi, and I am the marketing head of Jacob Co. Ltd. And for this week, we are going to learn our lesson for this week is common BIR tax compliances for non-VAT business. Okay, so uh, without further ado, let's go into start. But um, I am going to give you five seconds to get your to get a pen and paper para kung meron kay kailangan na take note, then you can do that. Okay, so let's go. Time's up, guys. So today, um, before we start, papakita ko muna sa inyo yung sample ng COR. So this is the sample of COR. So meron akong video for this one kung ano mga parts or ano-ano yung mga pwede natin makuhang information about COR. But for this time, we are going to focus on this area. So this area, dito natin makikita yung tax activities ng isang registered business. Mga pananvat ka man or VAT. But right now, we are going to focus kung ano ba yung mga activities, common activities or common BIR tax compliances ng isang non-VAT. Alright? So, dito mo siya makikita dyan. Registered activities then tax type. So, lahat dyan, nakalagay yan yung kailangan ninyong bayaran or abangan or bantayan na para hindi kayo ma-penalty. So, ready ka na? Let's now proceed to our first common BIR tax compliance as non-VAT. And for the first one, this is the income tax. So, an income tax is a tax that governments impose an income generated by business and individuals within their jurisdiction that is specified in the tax code of 1997. So, pag sinabi natin income tax, guys, ito lang naman yung um, tax ng ating magiging income. So, for, for normally, ginagawa ito quarterly and also annually. So, depende din saan tayo magpa-file, depende kung saan tayo naka, uh, saan naka-register yung ating uh, business. So, for quarterly, uh, ito yung kanyang quarterly date filing deadlines and for annual, ito naman. And for for the forms, meron tayo sis, ma, ma, meron nga tayong uh, single proprietor, meron tayong partnership, and meron tayong corporation. So, iba't ibang form din ang ginagamit niya. For quarterly, for single, ang ginagamit natin is 1701Q. And for partnership and, quart uh, partnership and corporation, 1702Q naman siya. So, ito yung ginagamit natin na form for quarterly um, uh, filing ng ating income tax. But for annually, we have 1701 for, for single proprietorship. And for partnership and corporation, we have three types or tatlong form. That is 1702EX, 1702MX, and 1702RT. I am not going to discuss anong differences niyan kasi... Um, today, ang discuss lang naman natin kung ano ba ang mga common type or common tax activities ng isang non-VAT. So, let's now proceed to the second one. And for the second one, lahat ng registered business, meron tayong laging registration fee. So, for the registration fee, this uh, lahat talaga yun. So, sabi ko kanina, annual lang binabayaran natin dito. So, the annual amount for registration fee is 500 pesos. Just to clarify, gusto ko lang i-clarify kasi may, uh, nung nakaraang renewal, may mga clients kami na naghahanap talaga ng bagong COR. So, to give you, to, to, to clarify that one, hindi po naglalabas ng panibagong COR, CBI, CBIR, in terms of renewal. Kasi ang binabayaran lang po natin is, is yung registration fee na patunay na nag-renew tayo ng ating registration. But for the 2303 or Certificate of Registration Certificate, ano ba yun? Dole, dole. So, certificate, of uh, certificate of Registration, hindi po nagbibigay ng panibago si BIR dyan. Nagkakaroon lang ng bago if we are going to amend our address, our business industry, our last name, something like that. Or kung nawala natin and if we are going to get another one, yun, magkakaroon ka ng bago. But for renewal, wala, po tayong, wala pong binibigay na renewal or COR na bago si BIR unlike sa ating mayor's permit. And ang deadline ng filing ng registration fee is every January 31st. Tapos ang form na ginagamit natin dyan ay yung 0605. Then, ang naman ay withholding tax compensation. 
So withholding tax compensation is an approximate of income tax liability on compensation required to be withheld by the employer upon every payment or accrual or recording of salaries and wages in its books of accounts. Ang pinaka-essential dito guys, magkakaroon kayo ng withholding tax compensation if you have a employer-employee relationship. So uh, to explain that, hindi ko muna siya ma-explain right now since hindi naman yun ang focus natin. So, ang tax payable niyan is up to 35% of the compensation of the employee. However, kapag employee natin is less than or 250,000 less and less every year, uh, hindi na tayo kailangan maglagay ng withholding or hindi na natin siya inida when i-withhold ng 35%. Pero, we are suggesting sa lahat ng aming client kapag kami nagra-register, Naglalagay na kaabad, kaagad kami ng withholding tax compensation kasi it's part of our duty kasi as employer na darating din talaga ang time na may mga employee tayo na lalampas sa 250,000 yearly. So kahit, kahit nag-umpisa pa lang tayo, let's make it a habit na meron tayong tax, uh, withholding tax compensation. Kapag wala naman tayong employee na more than 250,000 yearly, ay file lang naman natin dyan, I-0. So ang deadline niyan, monthly is every 10th and ang annual is every January 31st. So, ang form sa ginagamit natin dyan for monthly is 1601C and for annual is 1604CF. Alright? Next. Withholding tax expanded OTH. So, sa withhold, ang withholding tax expanded na madalas na, ginag, na meron tayo sa mga, sa mga negosyante ay yung withholding tax on rentals of real and personal properties. Meron tayong 21 total na withholding tax expanded. I am going to discuss that soon kung ano-ano ba yung mga to. Kasi umaabot to ng hanggang 30 plus yata na percentage in total ng lahat ng expanded. But for us, ang madalas na binabayaran natin na BR tax compliances or back BR tax compliance ay yung withholding tax expanded in terms of rentals of properties. So for example, kapag nagmerhang sa iyong negosyo, nagrarenta ka ng iyong shop, then 5% of the gross rental, yun yung babayaran mo na creditable na, na withholding tax. Okay? Then, ang deadline niyan is every month every 10th of the following month. So, ibig sabihin, yung January mo, if file mo siya dapat, February 10. And ang annual niyan is January 31st. Ang form na ginagamit natin, 0619E for monthly, 0601EQ for quarterly, and itong 2307, I just going to discuss this one, panandalian lang, ito yung ginagamit natin, especially uh, rental tayo, and if our lessor has a permit, dapat, ayun, isa, isa pa yun guys, kapag mag -renta tayo, let us make sure, you need to make sure na yung, yung lessor ninyo ay masarili din siyang business permits. Kasi kapag wala, it would be useless. Kasayang kasi, normally, ang dapat talaga ang nagbabayad ng ating, kaya tayo nag-withhold kasi we withhold natin si lessor. Pero kung, kung hindi tayo makapagbigay ng 2307 kay lessor at wala talaga siyang permit, ang lumalabas tayo ang uh, walang kwenta yung withhold kasi tayo din ang nagbabayad. Okay? So, yung 2307, we are going to present this one to our lessor para ma-reimburse ninyo yung binayaran nyo na withholding tax ay, sa five, na uh, withholding tax rental ninyo which is 5% ng gross rental. So, ganun siya guys. Okay? Next. Ang next naman is yung percentage tax. Ito madalas talaga ito nakikita. Percentage tax or other percentage tax or non-VAT is a business tax imposed on persons or entities who sell or lease goods, properties, or services in the course of trade or business whose gross annual sales or receipts do not exceed 3 million and are not VAT registered. So yung percentage tax, nakikita natin ito sa tax activities kung ikaw ay non-VAT registered ka plus Kapag, ikaw, kapag yung gross income mo yearly is less than 3 million. Kapag lumapas ka na ng 3 million sa isang buong tano, taon, automatic magiging VAT registered ka na. And tax payable nito guys is 3% of the gross sales or receipts. And ang filing nito quarterly lang siya. So it, that would be April 25 for the first quarter, July 25 for the second quarter, September 25 for the third quarter, and January 25 for the fourth quarter. And ang form na ginagamit natin saan ay 2551Q. Okay. So, thank you so much guys. I hope meron kayo natutunan for this week uh, about kung ano mga pinafile ng isang normally na pinafile ng isang non-VAT registered business. So, um, my, again, my name is Adrian. And if you 
If you have any questions in regard to tax accounting, tax compliances in BIR, business registration, and any business-related stuff, please do not hesitate to contact Jacob Ko Ltd. Um, Ijarmed mo lang yan, libre po magtanong at magsasagot po kami hanggat kaya po namin sagutin. So, without further ado, thank you so much everyone for watching this video. I hope meron kayo natutunan. And this is Jar Custodian of Business Company Limited, your asset to so your liabilities. See you again next lesson. Bye for now.